Hi, this is Tom Baker from MyLifeInHDR.com. Today I want to spend a few minutes demonstrating a technique that I've been playing around with lately to help overcome the limits of today's lenses when it comes to sharpness and depth of field uh, using a plug-in called Helicon Focus. Today when we want more of our pictures in focus, we tend to stop down the lens to like F14, F16, F22, etc. So we can get that deep depth of field. But when you do that, you lose some of the sharpness because of diffraction. The, more, the higher the f-stop, the more diffraction, the less sharpness is in your image. You know, every lens has a sweet spot, and it's normally about two stops above uh, the lens being wide open. So when you're shooting at f-14, f-16, etc., you're really, really far away from, from that sweet spot. So to get around that, Helicon Focus uses a technique that blends multiple images together. Each image is focused on a different part of the scene, and when the final image is blended, it looks like it's in focus all the way through, front to back, side to side. It's kind of like HDR software, only instead of exposure, it's for focus. And the best part about all this, it's really easy to use. So first, you need a series of shots. And those shots need to focus on different areas of the scene that you're looking at, as I said. You really, really want to use a tripod for this so that you have nice, sharp images. The better your base images are, the better the final image is going to be. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm using a series of photos here that I took in an abandoned factory in Cleveland. They're actually processed HDR brackets, because uh, you can combine HDR and this extended focus technique without any problems. Uh, and I shot at different focal points on purpose. Uh, for this series, I shot uh, four different focal lengths. I, I focused uh, in, on the debris in the front, uh, the crack, uh, this, which looks like a door, and, and on the wall in the back and you can see if I flip through my brackets you can see different areas coming into focus a little cleaner um, so once I was done with that uh, I processed them in the HDR software so that we can use them in Helicon Focus now uh, I should say that uh, the way I shot it uh, was on a tripod as I said I was using the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter wide angle lens I shot it wide open at f 2.8 and I did that on purpose because you know, a wide angle lens has so much depth of fill to begin with. I was trying to minimize it so that we could get a, a pretty good test result. Um, 2.8 is as wide as this lens will go. I was also a little too close to this edge. I was less than a foot away from the debris here. So I never could get it into to sharp focus because I was with inside the window of, of what the lens needed uh, to get critical focus. I'm not too worried about that. It still, for our purposes, will demonstrate what I wanted it to do. If I needed to get that, I would have just stepped back uh, another foot and been able to, to get everything in, in proper focus. So now that we have our brackets, uh, or, or in your case maybe, uh, your, your series of images, uh, in Lightroom I just right click on them. Go to export, helicon focus, and in a few minutes it'll process them and it'll open up the program, which looks a lot like this. You'll see your images that you just exported uh, on the right hand side, and you'll just want to go through and click and put the check mark on each image you want to use. This way, if you brought over an extra image, or if you were actually going through and you were looking for images in a folder manually, you could select. When you export them from Lightroom, it should just be the ones that you want. So just click on all of them come up here to parameters you'll see your source images here you'll see the first of the source images on the top this will be blank to start you'll have method and full resolution I generally stick with the defaults uh, the more I learn about it there may be things to tweak like radius and smoothing but for now the defaults are doing a good job for me so I don't want to mess with it once uh, you, you're at this point all you have to do is click on run and you'll see the program start to process down here it'll start building a map you can see these are the areas of focus that it's combining together and when it's done you can see the final result now at initial glance it may not look like much but if you start to zoom in on the top here and you compare the base image to the final image you can see how the final image is a lot sharper than the first base image and if you really zoom in you know see this isn't as sharp as this now you could compare it to the different images 
on the top and you can see things going in and out of focus. And what you have on the bottom is an image that's a lot more in focus than, than any of the source images are. Uh, we can scroll over, see. And, you know, you might find that there are areas that aren't as in focus as one of your base images. And if you do, you can click on retouching and basically just clone in the pieces that you want from your base image into the source and get the photo exactly the way you want it. When you're done, all you have to do is click on File, Save. It'll save it back into Lightroom, and then you can edit the photo the way you would normally edit you know, any of your other photos. Uh, I ended up with this as my final image. Uh, obviously, it's been fully processed using uh, various plugins. Uh, this was Nick Color Effects 4. Um, I'm very happy with the final image when you compare it to any of the base images and where it started. Uh, the final image looks pretty good to me. You really do have this extended focus uh, throughout. Everything's very nice and sharp. And then obviously so with the final processing, it's, you know, it's very crisp, contrasty and everything. So I'm really pleased with it. I certainly think it's worth uh, checking out. They have a 30-day demo. If you do macro or landscape photography, you don't lose anything by, you know, by downloading the demo and trying it. You can find the software at www.helicon.com. H-E-L-I-C-O-N soft.com like I said 30 day trial a one year license I think is $55 for the pro and a lifetime license is $200 it's not cheap but compared to a new lens maybe it's not so expensive after all alright thanks for watching have a good day